Hello, you're listening to the Science of Successful Job Hunting with me, Mildred Talavi, author, speaker and blogger committed to inspiring and changing lives in business and careers. This podcast series is all about sharing tips and techniques with you that will take the guesswork out of your job hunting. Why? Because successful job hunting is not about luck, chance or hope. Successful job hunting is a science. Welcome to today's episode. Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Science of Successful Job Hunting. Now, if you've listened to other episodes of this podcast or read my book or any of my blogs or articles, you will know that I'm a huge fan of social media. I mean, I just love the way it's made our world smaller in a good way and open up access to connect with people from all walks of life all over the world. Now, I say that because I probably I probably never would have connected with my guests for today's show were it not for social media. Now, Ida Melody Babella, I hope I'm saying that right, <laughs> is an <laughs> expert in recruitment in Africa. She's the head of talent division at Combinations, a recruitment firm which specializes in the selection of engineers and executives for middle and senior positions in Africa. She also hosts a career segment on Vox Africa TV twice a month, giving advice on everything from creating a winning elevator pitch to succeeding in a job interview. And if her diary wasn't full enough, Ida also provides career coaching and counselling to help professionals relocate for their dream job in Africa or beyond, which is what we're going to talk about in today's show. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome Ida Melody Babella to the show. Ida. Welcome to the Science of Successful Job Hunting. Uh, uh, thank you, Mildred. What an introduction. I was actually trying to realize if you were talking about me or someone else. <laughs> you are that thank wonderful Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Thank you for being on the show. Now, Ida, we were, as I mentioned, we were introduced recently on LinkedIn by a mutual yes. connection who thought we should get to know each other. And here you are on my show. So mm-hmm. I've got to ask, are you as crazy about social media as I am? I am. Absolutely, I am. And it opens so many doors for me in the rooms of what we're doing in terms of recruiting, uh, connecting, networking, finding people, finding talents. I use social media exactly in the same way and all the interactions that are created through it are just amazing. So I'm a big fan exactly as you are. Brilliant. That's good. It's really good to know. So I've got lots of questions for you, but I guess the first thing I want to know is, I want to know about your own career journey, so and what how you came to do what you do today. So, so just share some of well your whole journey with us, really, about how you got to doing what you're doing now. All right, okay. Well, I'm French, um, so I was born in France, originally from Congo, uh, Congo Brazzaville, so in Central Africa. That's where my parents are from, uh, and I moved to London in 2005 after graduating in uh, international business administration and uh, started my journey here in London. I wanted, first of all, to improve my level of English, sorry, my level of English. And I got very quickly and rapidly uh, involved in recruitment. So I started as a headhunter in the IT uh, sector. So I was recruiting SAP and ERP consultants in Europe. And in 2010, I had this urge and this, uh, I don't know, desire to actually uh, create and have uh, and be a platform to create job opportunities for people from the diaspora and in Africa, because I've always wanted to be involved in the development of the African continent. So I'm, I'm very, very proud of my roots. Mm-hmm. And I always wanted to play a key part. So in 2010, this is where I co-founded with my uh, business partner, Gongdo Guinabe, mm-hmm. also a French national from the African diaspora, this recruitment firm, Combinations. And uh, started here because we were, first of all, the victims of you know, willing to go back home and not really know how. Mildred. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's what everybody's going through. I would love to go back uh, yeah. in Ghana, in Nigeria, in Angola, in Congo. But how? How can I secure uh, a good, uh, sustainable quality of life? How can I secure uh, a good position where I won't have to lose out on my skills and experience? Um, these are all the questions that most of the professionals are asking, and they didn't really know which platform and which bridge they could use to find a, a, a position in Africa. So that's how Combinations was, was created, to provide an answer mm-hmm. and a rapid way to access job opportunities from Europe and in Africa. So we are not the only ones, mm-hmm. of course, but our 
different i would say our usp is that we are from the diaspora you know and yes. um we, we really want to we we leave this uh, experience. We live this dynamic of people who grew up abroad and who now wants to contribute and go back home. So that's what makes it a bit more um, of a, a personal journey, more than just a business. Wow, fantastic! Uh, uh, that's really good. I, I must, I must say, I am African. I'm Nigerian. You know, I was mm-hmm. born there, grew up here. Um, so I must say, I'm embarrassed at how out of touch I am with recruitment over that, mm. side, that side of things but I guess it's understandable since I've spent almost all my life here but yeah. um so I've, I've got to ask you is recruitment alive and kicking over in Africa I mean is, is are there loads of good career opportunities as a whole absolutely absolutely there is everybody's talking about Africa as the destination of choice when it comes to uh business and economical or, or possibilities and opportunities and this is the case there's a lot of things going on um so all all these uh, opportunities are accessible but to the person who has the good added value the good know-how the good expertise mm-hmm. being in Europe is not enough being an expat is not enough mm-hmm. and being from the diaspora is not enough so you really need to make sure to prepare your uh, curriculum and make sure that you have a real proper added value to bring in the companies and in the countries you relocate. Uh, different mm-hmm. sectors are booming, obviously infrastructure and construction, obviously, because Africa needs to develop first in mm-hmm. terms of their infrastructure. So roads, hospitals, schools, uh, buildings, everything starts with having a good transportation and infrastructure system. Mm-hmm. So, Construction, definitely, almost everywhere in Africa, I would say. Um, mm-hmm. Oil and gas in certain countries. You know, you have Ghana, Angola, Congo, Nigeria. You have a lot of things going on in terms of the energy sector. So where we would be looking for engineers, you know, wedding engineers, petroleum engineers and, and everything. Mm-hmm. Agricultural, Mildred, is also yeah. something that is very, very fastly growing. Governments are understanding now, now it's time to for Africans to be uh, able to provide for themselves and to develop agriculture. So this is also um, a sector that is uh, rapidly uh, growing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in the public sector, we always need teachers, you know. Uh, we always need people to be able to train and to teach. So, yes, a lot of things are happening in Africa, but it's not a magic recipe. It's, it takes strategy and it takes time and it takes uh, a lot of commitment and persistence to be able to relocate back home. Okay, it, it sounds like it. So you mentioned agriculture, construction, engineering. So if if you're somebody with I don't know soft, not soft as such, but let's say someone with my kind of background who's into maybe media, journalism, or that sort of thing, are there good opportunities for you in Africa? Um, I have. If I look at our activity, it's new to us. And it, we are, we're not working in this type of industries before. Uh, it was mainly engineering. Uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's surprisingly, we have a lot of uh, companies who are now approaching us to find journalists, mm-hmm. head editorial, mm-hmm. um, social media or community managers, I would say, you know, marketing managers. Wow. And these are actually for TV channels that are now developing on the African continent. Information is now important for mm-hmm. everyone. African mm-hmm. Africans and I know that Africa is composed of 53 to 55 countries, but I want to talk about Africa in a whole because yes. the dynamic is the same for every country. Um, and they understood and we understand now that information is power and it's time for Africa to be able to raise its own voice. So there's a strong interest in developing um, TV channels mm-hmm. and communication networks. So that's the reason why, yes, in your sector as well, now we are recruiting for journalists, we are recruiting for editors, we are recruiting for uh, cameramen and everything, for TV channels mm-hmm. uh, who want to, you know, uh, um, uh, create a network, a, a media network, uh, pan, pan, pan-African pan TV channels, for most of them. Mm-hmm. So it's rising. It's new. I wouldn't say that it's... Yeah. it's going to be huge but i know that it's it's rising and there's a i I would say a few five or six projects in central and west africa that we've identified where there would be some needs for um uh, the media industry interesting definitely interesting so so how many countries in africa do you operate in well we want to operate in all of them but Mm -hmm. uh we mainly uh focus as i was explaining introduction i'm Mm -hmm. french when we started we mainly focused on 
uh, supporting companies who are operating in Francophone Africa. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we recruit a lot in um, Côte d'Ivoire, Senegal, Chad, Benin, uh, Congo, of course, Cameroon, Gabon, mm -hmm. uh, Burkina Faso. Uh, but obviously, we, we, we want to support, we want to be present for any type of job opportunity. So we manage to also work in countries like Nigeria, Ghana, mm -hmm. Tanzania, and Kenya, as from uh, uh, English-speaking countries. Mm -hmm. And we have a few going on in Sierra Leone and in Liberia, but it's a bit slow, you know, doing, providing what's going on in that side of the continent at the moment. But opportunities are there, um, mm -hmm. and we're trying to support our, our clients uh, to recruit key staffs over there. So that's kind of, yeah, that would be roughly the areas where we worked and operated in. Mm -hmm. And Angola, of course, I almost forgot Angola. Okay. And, and, and is there a particular part of Africa that has the best career opportunity at? opportunities at the moment but the southern part of africa has always had but they've also very organized they've been organized for a long time you know in supplying and first of all dealing with their immigration and the work the, the flow of workforce from the other countries in the southern part of africa to south africa so i would say that obviously this is the most um uh, booming part of africa and it's always been it's been one of the leading economically speaking leading the region of Africa in terms of job opportunities and and uh, and growth but now there's a lot of activity going on in central and west africa this is just mm -hmm. amazing you know all the opportunities that we hear of uh, in cote d'ivoire um in benin Mm -hmm. uh, in Angola, you know, Angola, if you know, Luanda is, is now one of the most expensive city in the world. I don't know if you've heard that. But... No, I haven't heard that yeah. at all. Wow. In Luanda, it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. So there's, uh, Central and West Africa are really fastly growing. And, you know, we've heard, uh, a lot about Kenya, for instance, you know, where the mobile, uh, mobile banking, mobile payment. I don't know if you've yes. heard of that. Yes, mobile yeah. payments. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it well, was that's, born that's in happening in Kenya. Absolutely, this is why it was born. You know, uh, mobile payment system and uh, and uh, and enabling people to make payment transfer through their mobile phones and their cell phones. So Kenya would be kind of a small Silicon Valley almost. You know, where new technology is really rising as well. Um, so wow. I could not pinpoint one aspect. You just need to identify the right sectors for the right regions. I would mm. say. Wow, that is fascinating. I didn't know all of this excitement was happening. <laughs> you know, that's so good. So let's let's actually talk about relocating for your dream job because obviously this is quite a big decision to make. Um, so how does someone know that they're ready for such a step? Uh, first of all, they should feel it. <laughs> I think desire to relocate needs to be stronger than the security of staying in the UK or in Europe. First of all, you need to really make sure that you're ready to go. Um, I would say that you really need to make sure, and I was talking about added value. You, mm -hmm. Being in the UK is not enough, as I said, and being from the diaspora is not enough. People in Africa and the companies are very, very, very um, rigorous and, uh, and picky, not even picky, but they, they, they know the skill set that they need. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really important to do your homework and to understand the real added value in terms of expertise, projects, achievements, and know-how that you want to bring to the continent. So do your work of, you know, uh, doing a competency assessment and knowing exactly what you want to bring back home. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. Mm -hmm. Don't just send a CV thinking that it's going to be fine because you're based in Europe. So it gives you a, 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 a step extra or, you know, it gives you more credibility. This is not the case. So do you Matt, really work on your job application and um, highlight your mm -hmm. real core added value? So, um, so, so what you're saying is just the fact that, oh, I'm based in London or America or wherever isn't an automatic ticket to get a great job over in Africa. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> because you have ex, you're competing. The competition is very, very fierce and very, mm. very huge. You're not the only one. Mm. And even though companies are not looking to recruit not only expats, because it's always been the case, uh, but also people from the diaspora to support their relocation back home, mm. this is not the only selling point here. So when you go back home, what do you bring? What do you do? What is the added value that the company is looking for that you can shop, broadcast, promote, and uh, and and give uh, to the company when and to the recruiter when you go there? So that's very important for you to exactly understand who you are, mm 
as a professional and what you can do and what you can bring. Mm-hmm. Okay, that, that's good. So on average, how long does it take to successfully relocate? I mean, what kind of things do you have to have in place before you, the, the, the big leap? Um, I would say that it can, it varies. Um, can, 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 it really varies, Madrid. It varies. Mm-hmm. Um, the different steps, if there are, if there's any. So first of all, to have, to optimize your application. When I, when I talk, when I mean by optimize your application, that means to have a really winning CV, a very good CV, well written, uh, achievements focused and of achievements driven, not competency driven, if it makes mm-hmm. sense. Yes. Um, a really, really, really good cover letter that highlights your true aspirations to go back, not just to say that you think Africa is great, so why not? Uh, so we really want to see that you have a genuine passion for relocating back home. So that's the first thing. Optimize your job application. The second thing is to understand where you're going. Mm-hmm. Every country is different. Don't, do not think that Africa is the same. Every country has its own culture, its own policy, and its own ways of doing business. So understand and study the country you relocate to. Mm-hmm. Is, is it stable? Politically stable? Mm-hmm. Is there any security? When are the next elections coming? You know, when now we're looking at Congo, we're recruiting in Congo. In 2016, there's going to be some elections. So you need to know that. You need to think about what's going on in the country. What is the quality of the infrastructures? Hospitals, schools. If you want to go back home with your kids, how can you, uh, guarantee, um, the quality of your, of, of, uh, of, you know, your existence, your of your, of your lifestyle. Exactly. Of yeah. lifestyle. Um, the availabilities of goods, you know, you don't want, it's going to be different because you're relocating abroad, but obviously you want to make sure that you're still comfortable, you know, that you still have this balance between your personal life and your professional life. So are all the goods available? How does it work in terms of, you know, consuming goods locally? Is it well organized, you know? Um, and the cost of living, obviously, I was talking about Luanda, and it's, it's very expensive. So you really need to understand and study the country you relocate to. That's absolutely a must. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you need to be realistic. You know, you know what you have to offer. You know where you're going. So you need to be realistic in terms of the packages and your expectations. That's the third thing. You know, mm-hmm. when you're going to start talking about uh, when you're going to start negotiating around the contract, there's different things that you need to take into consideration uh, first of all uh, the type of contract that you're going to be offered is it a local contract like a local to local is it expat to local is it local to expat which mm-hmm. means that you know the time where we had so many benefits and advantages of re- re- relocating back home has changed it's over now you know companies are now reevaluating the cost of expatriation mm-hmm. and they're really and offering packages that are more to their ideas more realistic and uh, more aligned with the reality of the professionals. So you really need to understand and to be realistic in your expectations, you know? Is it necessary to find a job first and sign a contract before you board the plane? Depends on what expect what, what is waiting for you where you're going. If mm-hmm. you have family, you already have a bit of a network. We were talking about social media, yeah. and that's something that uh, is part of what I call strategize your job search. It is key. Key, key, absolutely key, which means that you already need to start to have a network that maybe you could have started through social media mm-hmm. or family over there. I would obviously recommend, if you don't know anyone, to start creating and building your network from here before you go back, to, before you go anywhere in Africa mm-hmm. and expect to have a job. Maybe you have a family base over there. We can already help you to create your network. Mm-hmm. So it all depends on what is there waiting for you before you travel and before you board the plane. Okay, so walk me through what happens when someone comes to you for help in relocating. What what's the the, the key steps? What yeah. So what do you what do you do? So I let's say I want to relocate to you know um where where did you say Luanda? <laughs> you know. So what happens? So I come to you and I say yeah. at combinations. What what yeah. do you do for me? What's the first step and what's the last step? Um, so first of all, we make sure that you have uh, the right CV to offer and the right cover letter. So obviously, Mildred would have done a great job at you know rewriting the CV <laughs> of the candidate. <laughs> so optimizing your job application, you need, really need to have the right tools, the right business card, so your CV uh, uh, at hand, and the right cover letter. Second of all, we're going to design a strategy for you, which is identify all the job portals and all the key actors in the recruitment sector in Africa that you need in your network mm-hmm. to 
um, multiply your chances of landing a job, which means, you know, jobs, uh, um, employment, uh, job boards, sorry, in Africa, even recruitment agencies, even, even though we are one, our goal is to make sure that you are visible and that everybody knows that you are looking for a position um, back home. So mm-hmm. recruitment agencies, uh, job boards, uh, group of professionals, uh, community associations, you need to be where the professionals of uh, your sector are when they're recruiting. You need to be where, you know, the, 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 the dialogue is engaged. So that's the second thing. Identify mm-hmm. all the key actors in designing your strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when we've identified all these, we also need to, uh, we help you uh, identify uh, all the um, um, network of professionals, seminars, conferences, you know, events. There's so many things going on in London, for instance. You mm-hmm. need to attend the circles and the networks of professionals who are talking about the opportunities that you are looking for. Mm-hmm. You need to be where the activity is. So we also draw a list of all the events that you need to then to expand your network, right? And then networking, 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 which is using social media, using all the network of professionals, using all the job boards that you have. Mm-hmm. And we have a clear calendar. I mean, Mildred, every week you know what you have to do yeah. to maximize your chances of getting one step closer to getting to that interview, one step closer to getting to that offer and one step closer to getting that job. But it all starts with the right strategy and that's what we uh, uh, provide um, our clients with. Wow, that sounds pretty intense. So so it's a hand-holding process, but at the end, I'm sure it, it sounds like it's something that will be successful. It is, it is. You know, six, 70% of it is all networking and mm. consistency and persistency persistency or persistence persistence i guess yes. <laughs> yeah. um it, it's homework it's a job itself to, to be looking for a job and we know that and you really need to have the right um how can i say it your 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 readiness psychologically you need to be ready you need to be ready to keep going even though you have rejection you need to be able to face and overcome all the challenges that are going to be your way in your job search mm-hmm. so we really need to support we realize that when we support you with some guidelines some routines some systems and some frameworks it always works but when you end up by your own on your own with no mentor no coach you kind of tend to uh, slow down as well you know mm-hmm. it's, Human, we all, we all like that. It's really good to have a support to help you hit the set of objectives and goals, and really, really making sure that you stick to that routine and you see you to just you stick to the goals to make sure that you know you you you, you land the job that you really want to land. But the support and the coaching, I think, helps you getting the right in the right dynamic of yeah. creation and of creating opportunities. Yes, it absolutely does. But in your view, when's the best time to consider relocating as a career option? Is it is it something that's best for early on, maybe after graduation, something you do midway or the, the latter part of your working life? Um, well, if you graduate in the UK and you expect to go back and con- relocate to Africa, it's not going to be a good time. There's always mm-hmm. exceptions, but it's not going to be a good time. Why? Just yeah. because people are looking for experience. So you need to give that experience. In Africa, there's a really, really a huge gap and real problems in terms of skill set, skill shortage. The government, I mean, the government is trying to tackle the issue of having so many graduates on the market with no experience mm, okay. that they cannot do directly and they're looking for people with five to five to ten years experience, relevant experience because they want people who can be up and running very quickly. Mm. So what is your added value as a graduate, even if you've graduated in the UK in the best school, what is your added value when you want to relocate back to Africa, mm. you know? What do you bring that nobody else, no, nobody else can? So I'm not, I'm not saying that the academic background only is not enough. I'm just saying that you need more. I mean, it's not a good thing. Yeah. I'm just saying that you need more. So try to try to develop your expertise, and that's what I was saying earlier. What is your act? You need to make sure that you've worked your act. You know what's your expertise. You know what your job specialization is. So I would suggest that after you graduate, you find this niche that you're going to be an expert on that you can sell then sell to any company in Africa. Five years is enough to, I mean, three to five years, I would say three to five years, even three years, we, we do 
see some very good candidates with only three years experience. But mm-hmm. that's a minimum to me. That's my opinion. Okay. No, that that is an interesting point, isn't it? Because it, since there's so many graduates out there, you're just going to end up being yet another graduate looking just for another, yeah, another yeah. job. So then mm-hmm. is it better as a mid-career thing or sort of when you're towards the end of your working life and you want to retire, maybe? Mm, and that's another question that I had, that that we have a lot with with our clients. When I mean clients is when we coach. Um, end career is for people who are now on the verge of creating, you know, competency centers, training centers, training people. That's mm. what's that. That's what. Um, that's the opportunity that they can find when they go back there. We're really struggling with the really really senior. Um, candidates and professionals, it's hard for the, us to place them because companies are looking for, you know, mid-career, uh, people with, let's say, 10 years experience, you know, 30s, 40s. That's the type of, that's the profile of candidates that the, recru- the, the companies are recruiting and they want to hire. So when you're at the end of your career, your added value is to transfer your knowledge onto, um, uh, younger professionals, you know, and mm-hmm. confirm so it's all about training and it's all about helping companies train people in-house and that's what we've developed a lot with our senior professionals so mid-career would be mainly for you know good executive positions in Africa and yes that would be mid-career many roles support role HR finance engineers but when you're at the end of your career and it's more about seniority then what you want to focus on is the transfer of knowledge mm-hmm. and then to be realistic, and I go back to be, be, being realistic, being realistic about your requirements, expectations, and package. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think you've been repeating that a lot, and it comes across loud and clear that one of the key things to, con- to, to you must be clear on is exactly what you're offering as Absolutely. a candidate, whatever stage of your career you're at, you have to have something you're offering. Yes. You have to have offer and you need to be able to uh, quantify it. How much does it cost? And that's why I'm talking about being realistic. If you have very little to offer, how can you come and just pretend to get a, a very big package, for instance, with all the benefits that we sometimes know of, of you know, housing allowance, student school fees? If you cost to the company more than you bring, this is not going to work. A company is always thinking of it's business. It's a business relations. First of all, before you actually uh, get into the company and you get to know each other, it's about a return on investment, and mm-hmm. that's how they want to see. Mm-hmm. You know, your salary must not be a drawback. Your salary must not be an obstacle. It must mm-hmm. be this is what I invest in this talent because I know that I'm going to get X, Y, Z in terms of creativity, business development, uh, innovation, or anything. Do you, does it make sense? So it's all about what do I bring that can bring value to the company first. So mm-hmm. always being very, very realistic. And when you keep that in mind, it always forces you to have a certain discipline in the way you handle your career plan, mm-hmm. your career, your choices, the choices that you made in your career. And most of the people realize that, oh, I should have done this differently if I had known five years back, because obviously it kind of uh, hinders in a way uh, um, you, the perception that you can give on the on the job market. You know, if you're making if you're not making the right choices, so it's always very important to know where you're going and make the right cho- choices along the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is that is absolutely great advice, and that's that's actually a really good way to to round up. But I've got one final question for you. So, for, for someone who's tempted, you know, to relocate, but they're still a little bit unsure. What are some of the benefits of relocating for your dream job? Oh, there, there, there are so many. Um, we're looking at a continent where it's like a green field. It's a joy to work in, in a country or continents and companies that are starting everything, which means that you have, there's so much room for creativity and innovation. Everything needs to be explored in certain areas. And I think it's absolutely great for someone who is passionate about his job because you can express yourself. And that's something that you cannot most of the time do in some of the companies here in Europe or in the West because they're already well structured. Mm-hmm. You know, the business model is already established. Where over there, um, companies are really looking to recruit people who are going to add a new vision or bring a new vision to the company. So there's a lot of room for creation and innovation. That's one thing. The second thing is the the, the lifestyle. It's, Mm -hmm. it's really a great lifestyle. It's, it's, you're really living 
in uh, in amazing conditions uh, because you need to bear in mind that the cost of living is, is still lower in certain countries than it is in Europe. But you yeah. still have a quite you have a very good package, right? Mm-hmm. So the salary is always uh, calculated based on your reality here in the UK. So you're always going to be dealt with as an expat in a way, mm-hmm. which means that it gives you a really great lifestyle when you're over there. And um, um, I, the last point there was one was um, it gives you, this is an environment, and I go to Africa a lot, it, it makes you want to start a business. It makes you want to try something. It makes you want to create businesses, and it makes you want to be an entrepreneur because there's so many things to be done. Mm. So there's room for everyone to have an input. There's room from, for everyone to actually, um, uh, who has any type of purpose or really wants to have a mission or really wants to, like, I don't know, start something in the public sector, in humanitarian or in business, supporting small businesses mm-hmm. uh, in Africa. There's so many things to be done. And I think that's what most of the people will tell you. Everything is to be done. So we just need to, we need, just need to have motivation, uh, passion, and a strong desire to bring your input to the development of the continent. So there's, uh, it's amazing. It's a really amazing way to fulfill yourself professionally and personally. Wow, I'm I'm almost persuaded to relocate. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll consider it in future. But you you have absolutely <laughs> sold it so well. So uh, yes, let's, let's, let's back and forth, <laughs> just from time to time. Because it's not for everyone, but from time to time, it's it's always a good way to get a feel of you know what the continent has to offer. <laughs> yeah, that is fantastic. And and Ida, thank you so much. You have been absolutely fantastic. It's good thank talking you. to you and finding out all this knowledge about relocating. So, but um, I wanna. How can people find out more about you if they want to get in touch with you and and, and combinations? Well, we have obviously a website where you can get all our most recent uh, job offer so it's www.c hyphen nations or dash nations.com so www.c um uh, nations dash nations.com sorry um obviously you were mentioning the career coaching so the career services where we do job search uh coaching career coaching interview coaching as well so everything is going to be exactly the same website uh and uh, you can contact us you know for career uh, or combinations at um, uh, coaching at c-nations.com. This is where you can get all the information or ask for information regarding career coaching in Africa. Okay, fantastic. Well, and yeah. Oh, Twitter oh, and everything. Oh, you oh. on the web. <laughs> Sorry, say that again. Yes, and obviously we're on Twitter and yeah. Facebook, but all the information are going to be um, on on, uh, on on the website, so um, you yeah. will be able to find us. And I'll put it on the show notes as well, so you can click straight through on here to to the website. But um, I I can't let you go without you saying at least one something in French, you know. So give 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 us a a final a final um pitch about relocating a very short sentence, but all in French. French, okay. <laughs> um, L'Afrique regorge de richesses et n'a besoin finalement que de votre savoir faire et de votre expertise pour entrer. Donc, euh, ne vous posez plus de questions. Partez, explorez et apportez votre savoir-faire car l'Afrique en a besoin. Combination sera là pour vous assister dans toutes vos recherches et, euh, et dans, euh, dans cet accompagnement. À bientôt et merci. Wow. All I, all I heard was merci. <laughs> <laughs> And I cheated. I did more than one sentence. I appreciate it. <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much, Ida. It's so lovely talking to you. Au revoir. Wow, à bientôt, Thank you very much. You've been listening to the Science of Successful Job Hunting podcast series with me, Mildred Talabi. Now, if you're a mid to senior level professional looking for a change in your job or career, get in touch with me at www.cvmakeoverexpert.com for help with your CV, LinkedIn profile, and much more. That's www.cvmakeoverexpert.com Until next time, take care and happy job hunting.